Hello, I'm Greg Sutton, uh, Chief Academic Officer for Hardin County Schools. Uh, glad to be here with you today to kind of clear up some uh, misconceptions maybe about some of the instructional plans we have for the 2020-21 school year. Uh, obviously, we have some different types of instruction going on and when we sent out some surveys in the past month to parents, we talked to them about two options really so far this year, which was face-to-face, uh, -face, in-person instruction. And then we also talked about an online academy. And I uh, do want to talk about uh, you know, the online academy a little bit today. Those that chose that option, we're very excited about what we've created uh, for the online academy. Basically, uh, for the elementary and middle schools, we actually started looking at our numbers of students that chose the academy. We started to actually identify teachers at each school uh, that were willing to come out of their school to teach within this academy. And it was based on the number of students we had at each grade level, kind of determined on how many teachers we needed to pull for the academy. And uh, we started assigning students to, to these teachers. So uh, we are pretty excited about that. And that's more for elementary and middle school. Now, when we got to the high school and we started talking about how could we develop an academy, start pulling out teachers from various high schools and start assigning kids to that academy. And what we realized was if we were to do that, there was no way we could get students a full course catalog. Uh, students will not have uh, maybe the opportunities within the online academy at that time to have AP, dual credit, all their electives of their choice. Maybe they couldn't be a part of EC3 uh, if we create a separate online academy. So we actually just decided to keep that within the schools, which I feel like was uh, the best decision for the high school kids. Uh, so the, so uh, when we really looked at the academy, and then even the A-B schedule that we talked about for high schools, it mainly came down not so much to social distancing as it was the course catalog for the students, course opportunities, uh, things to help them meet their graduation requirements like we mentioned with AP dual credit electives. It just kind of came out that that's the way it worked best at the high school level. So those are basically the two forms of instruction we've talked about uh, this summer with sur surveying our parents in face online academy. Now, Obviously, recently you've been hearing about the governor's recommendation that schools go NTI, non-traditional instruction. Um, some of you have certain opinions on non-traditional instruction and how that process went for you last spring. All I can tell you is that we are looking at revamping our NTI system, our non-traditional instruction processes, if our Board of Education were to vote to go to a non-traditional instruction model at any point in time throughout the school year. So um, it's going to be more systematic, more structured, uh, more live video streaming to uh, teachers to get uh, direct instruction. So I think that when you really look at our, our various models and you're going to say, maybe what is the difference between non-traditional instruction and online academy? Well, with non-traditional instruction, you're pretty much guaranteed to have teachers in your assigned building. Like if you're in an elementary or middle school and we do NTI as a district, you're going to be working with a teacher inside that building. The online academy, uh, you may be working with teachers, various teachers from across the district, assigned from different schools, which is not a bad thing. They're all certified teachers. Uh, they all work here for Hardin County Schools. And both models, non-traditional instruction and online academy, are going to be very similar this year in their setup, their makeup, their rigor, their expectations, their grading practices. I think you're going to see very little difference. So if somebody were to say, should I choose online academy or should I try to jump to NTI if the school district were to choose that? You just stay in the online academy. It's the same type of distance learning, same rigor, uh, same opportunities. and. Uh, so there'll be really be no need to switch at that point. Um, but we wanted you to know that. And um, if we were to go, so I guess my point to that is, if we were to go to a non-traditional instructional model uh, for the students who wanted in person, that wouldn't affect the online academy participants. They would still remain in the online academy. Um, really, uh, that's all I really had today to talk about was just looking at our various models, kind of recap again. The main two we looked at this year were the uh, in person versus the online academy. Obviously now with the governor recommendation we could have uh, another opportunity to go back to non-traditional instruction like we did in the spring. Uh, what we do want you to understand 
it's going to look vastly different than what it was last spring. Many of you are going to ask, will I have an opportunity to get a Chromebook for my child? Now, obviously, if we go to non-traditional instruction, uh, all schools will be working with families who need a Chromebook to sign those Chromebooks after their children so they can have opportunities for distance learning. And uh, we really want to move away from packets. Packets was not a success last year during the non-traditional instruction. Getting those packets out to families, getting those packets back. So we do want you to know that if we do go to NTI, it's going to be a much different, more structured, more systematic look than it was in the past. Uh, and I even feel good about our academy and how that's set up, our online academy. I feel like we have teachers that went through specific training for the online academy. Uh, the teachers we pulled at the elementary and middle school level had specific two-day training, working together, developing an instructional planning process. And we're going to do the same thing again as we revamp our non-traditional instruction model. If we go to that, we'll be doing some training this week on that as well. So it's not just about creating models, it's about training for the models, putting the correct uh, platforms in place, communicating this to parents, and really uh, letting people know that uh, we're there for the kids. We've got to do what's best for the students and work with parents to make that happen. So um, thank you all for uh, hearing me out on this. If you have any questions, please call me, Chief Academic Officer Greg Sutton at 270-769-8800. And uh, I certainly love to speak with you about the learning opportunities for your students. Thank you.